Welcome, everybody, to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. Let's get it. In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest technical analysis as Bitcoin recaptures 27000 And quoting Max Kaiser, BlackRock agrees with my $220,000 interim price target for Bitcoin. Send it. Also in today's show, former U.S. President Donald Trump may change crypto stance dramatically, says X. SEC official. I'll be breaking this down for you, as well as Gary Gensler explains why the SEC is taking litigation with a heavy strategy to regulate crypto, better known as Crypto Choke Point 2.0. We'll also be discussing the XRP highlights and the major takeaways from the Ripple Victory Party as of recent, as well as Rich Dad Robert Kiyosaki expects the Bitcoin price to become priceless. <laughs> Let's freaking go. When the Fed launches their central bank digital currency, which we all know is around the corner, we'll also be be discussing it was eight years ago this week ARK Invest became the first U.S. ETF to invest into Bitcoin when it was trading between $200 and $300 and Kathy says Bitcoin is still on a trajectory to hit her target between $1 million and $1.5 million per coin. I'll be breaking down her timeline we'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market all this plus so much more in today's show and a quick reminder to smash that like button if you gain value out of today's show and to support the movement, be sure to subscribe as it helps out tremendously. We're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. This bull market, in fact, 500,000, I think, is more realistic, but we can't do it without your help. So welcome, everyone. This is pod episode number 1418 of the Crypto News Alerts pod. Today is October 1st. Goodbye, September. But guess what? September wasn't that bad. We ended off in the green, which is a great sign. And now we're in October. So let's go to the moon. Shout we let's kick off today's show with our market watch which we do each and every day as you can see right here on coin 360 we got bitcoin above 27,000. we have a lot of the alt correct in with a handful also in the green and checking out coinmarketcap.com the current crypto market cap sits at 1.08 trillion the same as yesterday with a 24-hour volume of 28.78 billion dollars with the bitcoin dominance at 48.8 percent and the Ether dominance at 18.6%. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers of the past 24 hours, Render is leading the pack today, up 6%, trading at $1.63, followed by Solana, up 6%, trading at $22.72, followed by ThorChain, up almost 5%, trading just above 2 bucks. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers for the past week, overall, a sea of green, which is good for the entire crypto market. We got PLS, up 16.2%, FTT, the official scam coin of FTX, up 5.4%. How does it continue to pump? Blows my mind. And uh, RNDR, up roughly 6%. 6%. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, one of my favorite indicators, shows we're currently neutral with a 48. Yesterday was a 47, last week a 44 in fear, and last month a 40 in fear. So there you have it. How many of you are currently bullish on the King Crypto now that we're in October? Let me know. And what are your projections for an end of the month close? Let's pretend it's Halloween today, October 31st. Do you think Bitcoin is likely to continue north, maybe potentially 35, 40,000? Or do you think we're likely to crack back down or stay stagnant? Let me know your honest thoughts. And at the end of the show, I'll be reading everyone's comments out loud as we do each and every day in our live Q&A session. And with that being shared, now let's dive into some Bitcoin technical analysis, check out the charts and where the Bitcoin price is likely to go next. So last week didn't go all that positive for Bitcoin as the asset spent its trading sideways at 26.6. The start of the week was more painful in a matter of hours. Bitcoin slumped by several hundred dollars and dipped below 26. However, thank God for the bulls who managed managed to intercept the move and push Bitcoin north. This included a failed attempt to come overcome 27,000 on Wednesday, but a more successful one a day later. In fact, this one saw Bitcoin pumping to a 10-day peak of 27,200. And now let's check out some of the technicals right here. You can see overall, we have 10 neutral signals for Bitcoin. We got 12 buy signals and four sell signals. This is according to tradingview.com. And if we look at the oscillators, we have nine neutral signals signals, two buy signals, and zero sell. The two specific buy signals are the momentum and MACD. And then on the other side, we have the moving averages. I know it's cut off on your screen, but currently there's 
10 buy signals for the moving averages, which include the exponential, the simple moving average, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot more buy signals in the market than sell signals, which is a good sign. Now let's break down our next story of the day, which is Donald Trump. I've heard him say that he is not a fan of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies because it undermines the value of the US dollar. But now there's an SEC insider that says Trump may uh, change his stance and uh, be pro Bitcoin. So this is actually quite interesting. Let's break this one down. But first of all, uh, shout out to Max Kaiser. He agrees with BlackRock that 220,000 is the interim price target for BTC. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the high priest of BTC. So check this out. Former U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission official John Reed Stark argued that former President Trump could dramatically change his position on cryptocurrencies. Stark is currently president of the cybersecurity firm, John Reed Stark Consulting. And we ain't talking about Iron Man. Not <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, he founded and served as chief of the SEC Office of in Internet Enforcement for 11 years, also an SEC enforcement attorney for 15 years. Trump is running for president in 2024, quitting him here. Former President Trump is on record as being strongly anti-Bitcoin and anti-crypto, he wrote on X. However, the former SEC official argued the following, crypto voters might be one-issue voters and are a powerful and passionate uh, constituency. So perhaps former President Trump will change his crypto tune dramatically. Citing multiple media reports, he also noted Trump now owns some crypto. The former US president reportedly disclosed crypto holdings of 2.8 million in Ethereum in August after debuting the NFT collection last year. And in 2019, Trump stated he is not a fan of Bitcoin or other cryptos, emphasizing that they are not money. He further said they are based on thin air, adding that unregulated crypto assets can facilitate unlawful behavior, including drug trade and other illegal activity. Moreover, he said in 2021 that crypto is very dangerous. I'd say nowhere near as dangerous as the track record of the US dollar. What are your thoughts, chat? The former SEC internet enforcement chief concluded the following on Wednesday, under any circumstances, it seems likely that if a Republican is elected US president, a Republican appointed SEC chair would in the least approve a Bitcoin spot ETF and may even slow down considerably the SEC crypto related enforcement efforts. Check that out. Now, last month, Stark highlighted a number of potential changes that could benefit the crypto industry. They included a Republican president being elected. I agree. I don't want to see a Democrat president elected again after Joe Biden. That's just me personally, fam. What are your thoughts, though? SEC Chairman Gary Gensler resigning and crypto mom Hester Pierce is being appointed as the acting SEC chair. I think we do need a pro SEC chair to replace no Claire Gare. What are your thoughts, fam? Let me know, which leads us to our next story of the day, which is going to be Gary Gensler and Operation Choke Point 2.0 on cryptocurrency. Gary Gensler's got to go. I know yesterday we had so many hashtags in the chat. Fire Gary Gensler. Gensler. If you agree with that sentiment, let me know in that chat. Hashtag fire Gary Gensler. And with that being shared, now let's break down our next story of the day regarding Gary Gensler and his unethical regulation, in my humble opinion. The chairman of the US SEC, Gensler, testified before the House Financial Services Committee on Wednesday. How many of you watched that hearing? It was pretty entertaining, to say the least. During the hearing, several members of Congress raised questions about crypto and the regulation of crypto tokens. Congressman John Rose asked Gensler, Regarding crypto, I'm interested in why you have pursued a litigation-heavy strategy, despite the fact that neither you nor any of your senior staff are litigators, neither your chief or staff, nor your policy director or even your general counsel. Why have you settled on such a litigation-heavy strategy to address the crypto market? Here was uh, No Clarity Gary's response. Frankly, it is because the field is so rife with hucksters and fraudsters and non-compliant parties. This is a field where the American public is at risk and being harmed every day on these platforms that are co-mingling and often trading against their customers. Nonetheless, the SEC chair added, added we're also done rulemaking. Uh, we've also done rulemaking, one related to broker dealers that was a completed number of years ago, and the others related to the definition of exchange and the custody role. The congressman from Tennessee then told Gensler, in my view, it seems that these cases are brought with an explicit political agenda. Facts. Not a substantive legal one. Gensler quickly refuted, nothing can be further from the truth. There is nothing. The only thing political is protecting the American public. Tell it to the 
the judge. No Claire Gare. <laughs> Anyways, noting that Gensler used to work at a bank, rep Tom Emmer. Shout out to Tom Emmer. I'm a fan of this congressman. He put the pressure on him. He asked, can you assure this committee that your style of regulation by harassment towards digital asset innovation is for the benefit of every American and not driven by your desires to protect the industry incumbents? However, the SEC chair responded, this is a field that's rife with fraud and manipulation. And I'm looking out for the American investors who have been hurt by crypto. And before Gensler could finish his response, he was interrupted by Congressman Emmer, who stressed the following, Mr. Gensler, despite your years of rhetoric today, I am convinced you are not an impartial regulator. Instead, it is clear you are working to consolidate your own power, even though it means crushing opportunities for everyday Americans, and quite frankly, the financial future of this country. Let me know if you agree or disagree with Congressman Emmer. I agree 100%. I think he's right on the money. Now, Representative Al Green raised concerns that many people believe that crypto amounts to a giant Ponzi scheme. Comparing crypto to the US dollar, here's what Gensler had to share. Crypto tokens are really quite something different. They are not a currency. They don't fulfill the three functions of a currency, of a store of value, a unit of account, a medium of exchange. They might, maybe another day, but not in 2023, says No Claire Gare. Now, during the hearing, Congressman Warren Davidson, I'm also a big fan of his, highlighted several problems at the SEC, noting that in April, he proposed the solution called the SEC, Stabilization Act. Let's go. He explained that the bill would remove the role of chairman, adding it would preserve the current commissioners, but it would add a sixth commissioner, so there would be no more than three from any one political party. And he concluded, I wish the Biden administration would say, you are fired. So there you have it, fam. How many of you would like to see the SEC chairman, Gary Gensler, get fired? Let me know in the comments right down below. I've never met a fan of Gary yet, and I've been doing the show. Millions of people listen. You know what I mean? Not one single person has said, I like Gary Gensler. So if everyone's against him, why does he still even have his job? This is the million dollar question, in my humble opinion. Anyways, fam, now let's discuss. There was a recent XRP party. I believe it took place in New York. Um, a lot of new uh, announcements and such from Brad Garlinghouse, their CEO. So here are some of the highlights before we dive a little deeper into some price predictions from the one and only Kathy Wood. So... Let's break this baby down. Although the legal battle between Ripple and the SEC isn't officially over, payments technology company has gone ahead to host a party to celebrate its partial win in court. After the court win, Ripple's founder and CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, announced on social media a September 29th date for what was called a victory party. Now that all the event has been held, it hasn't gone without a mark for the XRP community. And you can see here it was celebrated September 29th in New York City. Was anyone here? there at that party? Let me know in the comments and let me know how it went. After years of battling it out against the SEC in court, Ripple finally got some reprieve. While Ripple's legal troubles aren't over, the company threw a party as expected. The party was a lavish one, with many people even queuing to get into the event. Lenny Kravitz, the legendary figure in the world of rock music, gave a performance at the event, which added to the joyous spirit of the occasion. Quite interesting. Now, Ripple CEO Garlinghouse gave an impassioned speech at the party, highlighting key points from the legal decision. Garlinghouse took to the stage to deliver a speech which inspired confidence in the XRP community while also acknowledging key personalities in the Ripple team. That's right. Notable individuals recognized included General Counsel at Ripple, Stuart Aldoltery, Deborah McCrimmon, and CTO David Swartz. Members of Ripple's legal team were also appreciated with names like John Deaton, Jeremy Hogan, and James Fillin. Garlinghouse also gave kudos to XRP's vast community, attributing to the success and the faith from its members. When the tough got going, or the going got tough, the tough got going, you guys were supportive to Ripple, to me, and I thank all of you, Garlinghouse shared in his speech. One thing I think we all learned is that it does take a village to fight a bully, and this village beat the bully. Now here's for the major announcements which were shared at the party. Ripple's future outlook wasn't discussed at the event as the gathering was just for celebration, but before the party even started, Garlinghouse tweeted to give a heads up regarding any announcements. Ripple, on the other hand, recently backtracked on its intention to acquire the financial organization Fortress Trust, which is interesting. They, they backed out of that deal. While Ripple's win on fair notice is important, the SEC's lawsuit obviously remains ongoing, and the stakes for the broader crypto market remain high. There have also been talks regarding a case settlement. However, many have seen the event as a major milestone for Ripple and XRP. In particular, attendees expressed a sense of relief and validation that the SEC ruling went in Ripple's favor, even if 
partially. As shared here by Jeremy Hogan, the Ripple proper party was amazing. Thanks, Brad G, for the shout out. And truly, the village beat the bully. And it was amazing to meet so many wonderful XRP people. Thank you all for your kind words and love. So there you have it. Fam, I mean, in my humble opinion, I am glad that they got the partial win versus the SEC, as I like seeing the SEC lose more so than anything else. However, we have to consider XRP is a bridge currency to be used for the central bank digital currencies. So obviously, I'm not a fan of CBDCs. I am all in on Bitcoin. But nonetheless, this is important news for the entire crypto community. So I figured I share it with you in today's show. Now let's break down our next story of the day. Rich Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, he talks about the Bitcoin price becoming priceless, meaning Bitcoin will be infinity and beyond when a CBDC is finally released. So let's break this down and shout out to Rich Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, the author of the book, warned about the risks of the Fed launching a CBDC. Rich Dad, we all know, is a best-selling book, and I read it when I was a young adult, helped transform my life to become an entrepreneur, so I got a lot of respect for Kiyosaki. He explained in a post on X Friday that the Federal Reserve Central Bank Digital Currency is a coming, and when that happens, privacy will be gone. He's preaching here. Big Brother will be watching, he cautioned, adding that when the digital dollar launches, gold, silver, Bitcoin, and cash will become priceless. Now, I agree with the Bitcoin part becoming priceless. I don't know about gold and silver, but I guess in comparison to a CBDC, I see what he's saying. He proceeded to urge investors to start saving gold, silver, Bitcoin, and cash now before it's too late. This is what he shared on his tweet on X. Fed, CBDC is coming. Privacy gone. Big Brother is watching. When CBDCs enter the market, gold, silver, Bitcoin, and cash will become priceless. So start saving all of this now before it is too late. The renowned author, is not the only one who is concerned about the Federal Reserve launching a central bank digital currency. Last week, the U.S. House Committee of Financial Services passed the CBDC Anti-Surveillance State Act with the support of 60 Congress members. Quoting them here, this bill is simple. It halts the efforts of the administrative state under President Biden from issuing a financial surveillance tool that will undermine the American way of life, explained Congressman Tom Emmer, Tom Emmer who introduced the bill. And in March, we had Senator Ted Cruz similarly introduce legislation to produce Reduce the Fed from developing a direct-to-consumer CBDC. However, the Fed is a long way from issuing this CBDC. In September of last year, the Fed chairman, Jerome Powell, the one and only Jay Powell, stressed that the central bank has not reached the decision on whether to issue a digital dollar. We have not decided to proceed, and we don't see ourselves making that decision for some time. We see this as a process of at least a couple of years where we'll be doing work and building public confidence in our analysis and in our ultimate conclusion. So there you have it. We all know it's coming down the pipeline, regardless of what Jay Powell says. CBDCs, they've been preaching about this for quite some time. So we need to get as much pushback as humanly possible. So here's some of the downsides of CBDCs. No privacy. They can control you. Whoever controls the money controls the people. What if they issue you the CBDC and your money expires? urging you to spend it, right? They don't want savers. Bitcoin is saving and money appreciating over the long haul. Every Bitcoin hodler who has hodled for a cycle or more, which is four years or longer, is in the green. You can't say the same for the dollar. Everyone who has hodled the dollar is down tremendously, you know what I mean? Due to inflation over the years. And obviously, as they continue to print until the wheels fall off, the dollar will continue to lose purchasing power while Bitcoin is guaranteed to continue increasing it's purchasing power against the dollar. So there you have it. I mean, CBDCs, trust them absolutely not. However, Bitcoin is the antidote to the CBDCs. So how do you save yourself from being stuck in this enslavement Ponzi scheme, central bank digital currency system? Simple, opt out with the escape valve, BTC, all the way. And with that being shared, now let's discuss Kathy Wood and her big predictions of Bitcoin price hitting between one and one and a half million dollars per coin. But first, I got to give credit where credit is due because Kathy Wood is ahead of the curb. Check this out. As noted at 
Bitcoin historian Pete Rizzo on X this week marks the eighth anniversary of Kathy Wood's decision to make ARK Invest the first U.S. ETF to invest in Bitcoin when the price was a mere $200 to $300 per coin. So as I say, she's a smart cookie. At the time, Bitcoin was still relatively uncharted territory for traditional investment vehicles, especially ETFs. However, Wood's decision to include Bitcoin in ARK's portfolio was groundbreaking and reflected her belief in the potential of the digital currency. Wood remarked at that time when Bitcoin was roughly 200 bucks, we believe the Bitcoin platform could be as big as the internet platform, which in its early days also faced tests associated with illicit activities. We would prefer to invest after rather than before such tests. We have been impressed that the Bitcoin price has stabilized in the $200 to $300 range. It could have imploded, but has survived. That's right. Though the exact figure can't be known, Bitcoin has witnessed an astronomical increase in value since the time, surging by roughly 12,000%. Talk about gains. This remarkable growth Growth has solidified Bitcoin's position as a significant asset class, capturing the attention of institutional and retail investors alike. Now, Kathy Wood and ARK Invest have remained at the forefront of crypto adoption and innovation. Their ongoing commitment to Bitcoin includes educational efforts like white papers, investments in Bitcoin companies like Coinbase, and public appeals for regulatory clarity around the sector, particularly around Bitcoin ETFs. Let's go. For example, ARK is one of the roughly 10 applicants for the Bitcoin spot. ETF alongside BlackRock Fidelity, and the vehicle is used to purchase its crypto, the Grayscale Bitcoin Investment Trust, better known as GBTC. And already, Bitcoin futures ETFs are publicly traded and have been since 2021. Now, still, while Wood is known as a Bitcoin bull, she was notably on the sidelines for some time, first posting on X that Bitcoin can go viral in 2013 when it was fighting to rebound from its $1,000 high that year. And as Bitcoin continues to evolve and reshape the financial landscape, landscape, Wood's early recognition of its potential and her contributions to the industry have left an indelible mark on the world of finance. So again, massive shout out to Kathy Wood. Now let's dive into her predictions more specifically, predicting the Bitcoin price is going to skyrocket here in the future. I'm also going to be breaking down her timelines of when precisely we're likely to hit these marks. Back in Feb February, uh, Kathy Wood of ARK made headlines when she raised her firm's 2030 price target for BTC from $1 million a coin to an eye-popping 1.48 million per BTC. Now, six months later, she's doubled down on that price forecast. More convinced than ever, the Bitcoin's on a trajectory to a million dollars and beyond. Send it. Now let's discuss, can she be right? Certainly one and a half mil sounds like an outlandish forecast, even for BTC. After all, Bitcoin is still trading at this time, just above 27,000, nearly 60% below the all-time high of 69 Gs. But Wood says she has the numbers to back up her assertions. So let's dig in. First, let's discuss Bitcoin as a safe haven asset. According to Wood, Bitcoin is the perfect insurance policy preach for an uncertain economic world. What convinced her more than anything was Bitcoin's performance during the regional banking crisis earlier this year when Bitcoin skyrocketed from 19,000 to 30,000. That's nearly 60% gains signified to Wood that Bitcoin was increasingly being viewed as a safe haven in an unsafe world. Facts. During any flight to safety, investors would rush to move their money into BTC. 100%. There's no denying that. So in short, Bitcoin is once again being viewed as digital gold before before the 2022 crypto market meltdown, it was commonplace to talk about Bitcoin as an alternative to physical gold and as the ultimate store of value. And according to Wood's bull case scenario, Bitcoin will eventually have a 50% share of the store of value market once dominated by gold. And what do we got? A market cap of roughly 10 trillion in today's numbers with gold. Now that figure might sound high, but it lines up with Goldman Sachs group predicted at the start of 2022. Back then, Goldman Sachs predicted Bitcoin would eventually account for a larger and larger share of the market rivaling gold. Based on that prediction, Goldman Sachs set a Bitcoin price target of $100,000. And guess who comes from Goldman Sachs? You guessed it. No clarity, Gary Gensler. <laughs> now let's discuss Bitcoin and institutional investors. Kathy Wood's valuation model for Bitcoin also includes some key assumptions about the behavior of institutional investors. The key metric to watch here is their asset allocation into crypto and specifically BTC. In her firm's bear case scenario for Bitcoin, this allocation stands at a relatively paltry 1%. But if it climbed to 2.5% in the base case scenario, then it skyrockets to 6.5% in the bull case scenario. The recent rush to file a spot 
bought Bitcoin ETF app with the SEC is perhaps the best sign yet of potential new institutional investors' interest into Bitcoin. Preach. In mid-June, we had BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, led the way with a spot Bitcoin ETF filing. Soon after, ARK Invest followed with an amended app for a similar type of spot Bitcoin ETF filing. No surprise here, but Bitcoin rallied hard in June after these announcements. These spot Bitcoin ETF filings were supposed to be going to unlock a tsunami of new money into Bitcoin, pumping up the price of the crypto. That's right, because we have a $700 trillion, uh, total addressable market. A lot of this money could be entering Bitcoin here shortly once we get the approval from No Clarity Gary, or after No Clarity Gary gets fired and replaced by Hester Pierce. Anyways, are these forecasts accurate? What are your thoughts? What's interesting is how, to relatively small assumptions, the Bitcoin will rival gold as a store of value, and that Bitcoin will represent a large share of institutional asset allocations can lead to a monumental assumption the Bitcoin will soon be worth over a million dollars per coin. Let's freaking go. And smash that like button if you're gaining value out of today's show, fam. It helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. I can't stress that enough. From my perspective, the assumption about the behavior of institutional investors is the most important. As ARK Invest noted in its February report, there has been an absolute sea change in the way that institutional investors think about crypto. Some big time investors, including BlackRock and Fidelity Investments, the two largest asset managers in the world, are now very much on board the crypto train. Their clients are demanding greater access to crypto, and they're now attempting to meet that need. So what do we look out for next? In terms of what's next for BTC, I'm keeping my eyes on how Bitcoin fares amid the economic uncertainty. I'm not quite ready to buy into the idea that Bitcoin is a safe investment, and certainly not after what we saw during the crypto winter of 2022, when Bitcoin lost nearly 65% of its value. But if there is another flare-up on the regional banking crisis and investors behave the same way they did earlier in the year, I might be convinced. Long term, I am bullish. And FYI, this is the author. I'm reading a article right now. I'm going to give you my thoughts thoughts in just a moment. It might not reach one and a half million by 2030, as Kathy Wood of ARK Invest is predicting, but it's also certainly going up over the next decade. If, if the institutional adoption rate skyrocket, then Bitcoin could be off to the races. Well, there you have it. Now for my particular thoughts. I do agree with Kathy Wood. I firmly agree that the Bitcoin price action is going to surpass a million dollars by the year 2030. I also believe that next year we're going to witness the two most bullish catalysts in Bitcoin history. Bitcoin ETF, which historically, you know what I mean? There's no denying it. There's four-year cyclical cycles, and every four years, prices go up. You know what I mean? It's supply and demand, stock the flow. And when you have a supply shock, you know what I mean, come in as well, that just adds to the bullish momentum. There's currently less than 2 million Bitcoin on the exchanges. Now, besides the Bitcoin halving, we also have the approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF. There's like a 95% chance that this gets approved. In fact, Congress told Gary Gensler they want the Bitcoin ETFs approved immediately immediately being the keyword. So once we get that approval, expect a tsunami of cash flooding into the Bitcoin markets. Those two catalysts alone are going to send Bitcoin to price discovery mode, which means new all-time highs. What's your prediction by the year 2030, seven years out? Do you feel will likely smash that one million or even one and a half million dollar target that Kathy Wood has? Let me know your honest thoughts, fam, in the comments right down below. And again, if you gain value out of today's episode, be sure to smash that like button. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, you know what to do. Massive shout out to everyone today in the live chat. What up TI? What up passive income with AI? What up selling with twins? What up Steve Randall Jr.? What up digital dankness, my man? What's popping? Call me ABD. Welcome GL Bailey. What it do? XR650L. Welcome, welcome. And y'all just tuning in and joining us. I appreciate it. This is a live and interactive Q&A session. So don't be a stranger. Be sure to say hello and drop any questions you may have. I'm going to address as many as I possibly can. And then when we're done with this live Q&A session, we're going to head over to Rumble for the uncensored Q&A after party, which we now do each and every day. Tim's Crypto, ready as always. Let's go. Larry Lowe, good morning, y'all. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hoddle Mike 73 what it do? Jonathan Briggs, I appreciate the support, fam. Much love, Evan Rivero. I just got about to bleed to death because my wound opened up. Good Lord. Thank God my dad's a doctor. Sorry to hear about that, Evan. Hope you're okay. Hope you're safe. Prayers to you and your fam. What is good? What is new? New month, new times. We in October. Let's send it to the moon. Zwee Tattoos, what it do? Welcome, welcome. Pumptober, I like that as well. Got a good ring to it. OG, back road crypto bootleg. Welcome, welcome. What's new? What's poppin'? 
Got a lot of comments. Robert Brady, happy Sunday. That's right, today is Sunday. Good stuff, good way to start the month. Baz, good evening, fam. Another day closer to the having a spot ETS. My parents' hard work and my hard work may be diminished or have been diminished by incompetent, corrupt governments for years. Bitcoin to the rescue? Hells yeah. If you can count on one thing, it's Bitcoin. If you can't count on one thing, it's the government. Just saying. Thanks, JV. You're very welcome. Appreciate you tuning in each and every day from Japan. Much love, fam. Leonard Ray, welcome. Good to see you, fam. At the eight-figure mark, we're all going to be dying laughing at the world, but will an egg be worth $1 because the dollar is worthless like the peso? That's a great question. <laughs> in eight figures, send it. That means $10 million or more. I'm so ready for that. How many of you would love to see an eight-figure Bitcoin price? Let's go. Maybe due to hyperinflation, it may come a lot sooner than what y'all are anticipating. Sailing with twins. What up, Crypto News Alerts fam? One love from South Africa. Shout out to all my Africans out there. Baz, what it do? Jeremy Amos, good to see you. My dad just stopped the bleeding. Well, what happened to you, Evan? Jeez. Uh, sounds serious. And you're still tuned into Crypto News Alerts. Much love and respect. Chris says gas is six. Dollars and twenty cents a gallon in San Diego. Hyperinflation is coming to a theater near us. Twenty forty. I think it's coming to a theater near us. Twenty twenty three. I'm sick and tired of these inflation prices. The dollar is becoming worthless in real time. Bitcoin closed September in the green for the first time since twenty sixteen. That should tell you something. That's like since nine years ago. Good lord. When it finished that year, sixty percent higher than the September close. September close is a big bullish signal. One hundred percent agree with you. And I call that yesterday. I said, if we close above 27,000, it's going to be one hell of a uptober, bullish tober. Let's go. Wish bro. Oh boy. 345 in North Myrtle Beach, referring to gasoline prices. How much are gasoline prices wherever you guys live around the world? Let us know. Here it's in liters. So it's hard to, I don't know how to translate it into gallons, but I know it's a lot. Um, yeah, I think 2020 is the best possible post having top or 220. Okay, I like that. That's actually Max Kaiser's prediction as well. He has been calling for a $220,000 price action, I think since 2021. And I think it's about to come soon, uh, true soon. I think likely by 2025, we'll see a multiple six figure Bitcoin price action. But what are your thoughts, fam? Ryan, welcome. Good to see you. That's why Trump released NFTs. Come on now. <laughs> Biden sold the most NFTs to anyone. Are you guys joking? Biden selling NFTs too? Good Lord. I, <laughs> I will vote for the best candidate who supports crypto freedoms the most. Amen. Now, you also got to be aware, they may be talking that they're pro-Bitcoin or crypto just to get your vote. You know what I mean? A lot of politicians will tell you what they think you want to hear just to get the vote. They got to win, right? How many times has this happened? A president, I, I'm going to do this. I'm, go I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then they realize... Maybe they can't do nothing because they don't have the power they imagine, but I think they're a lot smarter than that. I think they'll say anything to get your vote at the end of the day. Uh, so basically, they're saying, everyone vote Republican, and then we're most likely going to get the, uh, you know, the ETF approved. Well, either way, the ETF needs to get approved, but um, I agree. After uh, Biden running this country for the last four years, or I should say his handlers, as he is only a puppet, presidents in general are only puppets, unless you're a true president and a real man like uh, Nigel Bokele of El Salvador, but uh, they're very limited in what they can do. You know what I mean? Wall Street and the central bankers run the world. BlackRock is worth $10 trillion. That's more than most governments, GDPs, minus maybe the United States and China. You know what I mean? So look how powerful they are. I even think Gary Gensler, all of them, they're just pawns at the end of the day. The people moving, uh, you know, making the moves and pulling the strings, uh, real power, is never in the public eye. Real power moves in silence. And uh, I can't stress that enough. So don't be, uh, you know, don't fall into the illusion. Robert, possibly RFK Jr. Well, RFK Jr. is running as a, a Democrat. He is pro-Bitcoin. He says he's anti-CBDC. And he says all the things I like to hear. I just don't know how much I trust what he is saying. I'm just being honest, speaking out loud here. What are your thoughts, though? Thoughts are the same, says in tune. Uh, fire Gary Gensler. Uh, yeah, hashtag fire Gary Gensler, digital dankness. Much love. Shout out to dankness. Selling with twins. Yes, Leonard Ray says fire Gary Gensler. Seems to be anonymous here. It must be a Republican. It must be elected president for the country or we're completely ruined. Well, it seems America is being ruined uh, by design. 
Unfortunately, that's what makes it even that much sadder. Robert Brady, hashtag fire Gary Gensler. I'm with you, fam. Good day, JV and Crypto News Alerts fam. Coming from Cryptic Sniper. I appreciate you tuning in, Cryptic. Much love. In tune, hashtag fire Gary. Word. Knox Bill, I wish Gary to have... Irri irritable bowels. Oh no, not irritable bowel syndrome. That's the worst. Perfect Gary Gensler impersonation. Thank you. I try to switch it up, you know, from time to time. Yeah, Viola. Yeah, they're asking some hot issues. Get them. Fire that mofo. 100% dankness. People in charge will put Trump as president. Give the people what they want, says Chris. Gensler is up to something. Hard to say what it is. It's always something slimy. I am sure. Facts. Gorilla glue. <laughs> Gary Gensler, right? Girl Scout cookies, plug, play, cart, word, yummy. Leonard, Emmer, knows because him and his brother are trying to save their investment firm. Well, shout out to both of them. Trump 2024 says Jack Jeong, let's freaking go. How do these clowns get so much power? Uneducated masses. That's the sad part. You know how miseducated the masses are? Hmm. Goes to show you, Gary's mom doesn't even like him, says Knoxville. Probably not. <laughs> Tone Vase is a fan of Gary. Why? Explain that to me. I haven't heard uh, him talk about it. So if he shared some insights I don't know about, please do enlighten me. I feel anyone denying and pushing back a Bitcoin ETF is an enemy of Bitcoin. I also know that Gary is only a pawn. So regardless of who is in that position, it didn't matter if it was Jay Clayton who came before him or who comes after him, more than likely, they don't have much power. Again, they're just representatives. They're just faces sit there and they lie to you. They're professional liars and scammers. And they probably Gary probably owed the government a big favor because he became wealthy with Goldman Sachs. And I heard he's worth north of $100 million. So he's a already financially set for life. So maybe this is his way. He has to pay the favor back, favor for a favor. What they say in The Godfather? I'll do this for you, but one day I'm going to ask a favor of you and you're going to have to do it. Maybe something similar. Who knows? What are your thoughts? Andy Surfer, hola, hola fam. Gary the Worm Gensler. Yes, that's right. Why is Biden still president? Same thing. Yeah, corrupt is all hell politics, fam. Tone Bay says he is a fan of Gary. Yeah, that's interesting. Gary is bought and paid for. His next job at BlackRock is awaiting him. Wouldn't surprise me. Gary, thumbs down. Crypto News Alert stackers, let's go. Shout out to Coin Father. What's good, fam? Why is Vay a fan of the worm? Great question. I'd love to know as well. Tone thinks he is trying to prevent the Ishcoin ETFs. Uh, no. <laughs> How many, like, for example, Ethereum ETFs go live tomorrow, futures ETFs. Uh, we already have Bitcoin futures ETFs. He's uh, allowing everything minus Bitcoin spot ETFs. The one thing we actually want, which is the true price discovery market, which cannot be manipulated by these corrupt, you know, I'll just leave it at that. I forget we're still on YouTube. After the YouTube, we're going to go to Rumble. I'll be uncensored. I'll be able to speak my mind about how I feel about this for real. Uh, I like Trump and what he fights for. Freedom, I'd like to think. But if Trump is anti-Bitcoin, then I hope he sees the business opportunity in Bitcoin and changes his mind from a business perspective. I think that's a great viewpoint. You also got to consider Trump is a billionaire. He already has all the wealth and riches in the world. And uh, as the president, he says that the main job is to protect the U.S. dollar. So we all know Bitcoin was created as the central bank killer and it will destroy the U.S. dollar. So let's stop playing the games. So that he can say whatever he, want, he wants, even if he said, I'm for Bitcoin now. I wouldn't believe it. You know what I mean? Because who's putting him in power? He's working for central banks. You know what I mean? He's working for Wall Street. <laughs> so it just goes to show you. Anyways, XRP not for me, says Scooter Woodley. Same here. Word up. Dump Gary, says Keith Wood. Robert Gensler is the vice president and portfolio manager of T. Rao Price. I think Gensler will join T. Rao Price, uh, or Rowe Price, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, since his brother works for the firm. It would be very easy for him to get on board. Dump the chump. I like that. I got a special ring to it. That sounds great. Dump the chump. Nipsey, where are you at? Where's the mascot? <laughs> Late to the show, sliding in from Clearwater. Shout out. Smash the like. Appreciate that. Greatly appreciate the news. You're very welcome. They're not a fam. I've heard some say that uh, Trump or Trump is Satoshi. That's idiocracy right there. No way, Jose. Yeah, I mean, Satoshi needs to be at the 100,000 party. Who wants to get a picture with him? Wouldn't that be something? If I can get <laughs> Trump to our party, 
And for those that don't know, when Bitcoin hits that $100,000 milestone, I'm going to be throwing a $100,000 fiesta here in Puerto Rico. And you're all invited. I highly encourage you to join our Discord server at discord.cryptonewsalerts.net and plug into the Fiesta 100K channel. And you can get some insights on that. We can start masterminding the party. And who knows? I was thinking I was actually running some ideas with Dankness. I said, I'd love to invite Satoshi Nakamoto to the party, like the real Satoshi with the name, the government name Satoshi, which we all know and love. Wouldn't that be cool? A great photo opportunity. I'd also love to get Miss El Salvador at our 100K Fiesta party, make that happen and bring a lot of cool guests to make this uh, you know, a once in a lifetime experience. What are your guys' thoughts though? Let me know, fam. I appreciate it. Let's get it, says Will M. Well, let's get it then, shall we? And let's check out the Bitcoin price action again. Where are we at? We're still above 27,000. Let's go. Can't wait till this reads 97,000. You know what I mean? I could visualize it already. Can you guys see it as clear as I can? People will have to go back to the barter system to skirt tail the alphabet. <laughs> exactly. Hello from Michigan. Welcome. Hoddle Mike. I appreciate you. Much love. Hope you're having a great Sunday, fun day, 100%. One milli, send it, says Knoxville. I'm with you. I personally think the ETF approval is March 24th. Would be more impactful than it was to occur now. Normies will be more engaged, closer to the having. I think there'll be an important max inflows. Yeah, well, let's think about this hypothetically. Let's hypothetically say a spot Bitcoin ETF finally gets approved. Let's say it's BlackRock. They're the largest asset manager in the world, and they have the most moolah to bribe the SEC to get that acceptance first. First mover's advantage, game changer, right? So let's say they get approved in March, then the halving is in April. Those two catalysts back to back, along with the supply shock of limited Bitcoin on the exchanges, do you know that if BlackRock's and all, Fidelity, all of them, ARC21, all of them, when they start offering the Bitcoin ETF, they need to hold on to the underlying asset. There's going to be a supply shock. There's no other way around it. The price is going to go up. The majority of the people with the Bitcoin right now are the long-term hodlers. Do you know what this means? If we're under willing to sell, the prices are going to skyrocket, right? Diamond hands. Wu-Tang forever? No. Bitcoin forever. Just saying. Yeah, Wu-Tang too. This, <laughs> the sun begins to rise from the west, says GL. We already know what CW had said. Come up with something new. Are you talking about Kathy Wood? Well, what should I come up with new, fam? You know this is a daily show, so it's not like uh, a thousand new predictions are shared by influencers when people with track records like Kathy Wood, who have been accurate and invested in Bitcoin since it was $200 a coin. So come on now. You think I can do a daily show and have brand new news you have never, ever heard before, ever? Well, a lot of it is new news because I get new stories, but a lot of the predictions, just common sense. I mean, <laughs> we're not going to have a brand new prediction never heard before every single day. So just just keep that in mind. You know what I mean? Just keeping it real, fam. Every bull run, everyone is buzzing about it. The hodlers are the ones laughing at the end. I bet at the end of this run, no one will be without a few sats. I mean, it'd be stupid uh, if you get left behind on the sidelines, praying Bitcoin goes down to 10,000 like some channels are predicting. Some of the largest channels in crypto are predicting Bitcoin's going to crash $10,000. I've been telling, you know, I'm just like, serious? You kidding me? You know how close we are to 2024? We're talking about one of the most bullish years in Bitcoin history. We're right on the cusp of it right now. Game on. It's game time, fam. You're either on in the game or on the sidelines. You're either playing in the game or you're a bench warmer. You know what I mean? Get in the game. I encourage you. Gary and these gators in suits are not worried about the middle class, the working class, the dreamer. That's right. They're already extremely wealthy with generational wealth. They never have to worry about money ever again. So, you know what I mean? No relation to the average Joe whatsoever. I need a new all-time high by Wednesday. Send it. <laughs> Knoxville, let's go. Yeah, they didn't say when you're ready. They told him it had to be done yesterday. How do I tip? Great question, Peter. On the screen, if you have a uh, like a lightning wallet such as Strike, Jack Muller's company, you can download it from the app store on your phone. You know, download it and you just scan with your camera that QR code on the screen and you can zap sats. And when you do so, I get to keep 100% of it, which is cool. You can also do it through the YouTube or Rumble. Rumble has an option. You can send, I think it's called Rumble Rants. And then YouTube has something called the Super Chat. Either way, but you just got to note, I think uh, YouTube takes 30%, which, you know, 
whatever. It is what it is. It's the service they provide. But nonetheless, those are the three ways to tip. You can do so on Rumble. You can do so on YouTube. Or you can do so through the Lightning Network, through the QR code, which you can see on the screen. And I appreciate it. Any uh, Anything given my ways, I'm just going to use to scale the show and create more content and do uh, help get this Bitcoin adoption out there. So much love and much respect. Yeah. Sup, JV. Great show as always. Thank you, Golden Giant. Appreciate it. Len, who will participate in the Coinbase Crypto Alliance and send a letter to the elected officials? Hmm, good question. Sailing, one thing I know is we will all still be here on Crypto News Alert's channel with JV in 2030, styling, looking down at the no-coiners. Yeah, let me make a prediction. It's the year 2030. Bitcoin's trading at exactly what Kathy Wood predicted, $1.48 million per coin. And now I'm sharing price predictions at $20 million per coin. <laughs> How about that? Take that, Peter Schiff. Just saying, JV, do you know what percent of the population will have Bitcoin for it to hit a million? Good question. I have no clue. <laughs> I know, I, I think it's safe to say, you know, at least here in the United States, I know at least 50% of the people have heard of Bitcoin, but a lot of people are still clueless and have no idea. We also have to keep in mind, there's like, uh, you know, there's a finite limited supply. And I think there's 45 million millionaires in that ballpark globally around the world. So there's not even enough Bitcoin for half the millionaires currently in the world to hold one coin. And you let that sink in, you realize that Bitcoin is truly a scarce commodity. You know what I mean? very limited. So I would start stacking now because all I know is this, over time, it's going to be that much more difficult to be considered a whole coiner because, I mean, let's hypothetically say Bitcoin's at a million bucks right now. It's going to be very difficult to make a million dollars in fiat to be able to become a whole coiner. But now at 27,000, I think it's possible for anyone who gets you know, gets in and starts working hard. Maybe you start making money and putting some of your salary into Bitcoin. You can use online apps uh, to do so. I, I know you can do so through the Strike app. Um, you can do so through Swan and there's some other apps as well. You could probably do it with the Cash app, but start stacking. Don't wait forever. I think now is a great t price point to get your position because Keep in mind, in 2021, that was uh, two years ago, Bitcoin was at 69000 And right now we're, you know, I don't know, 60% discounted price from the top. Knowing a halving is around the corner, you already seen what happened in 2020 after the COVID crash, Bitcoin... Uh, drop from, I don't know, seven, eight, nine thousand all the way down to a bottom of roughly 3,500. And within a year, by the end of uh, 2021 in November, to be more precise, Bitcoin hit the all time high. And we also saw Bitcoin rise in 2021 from roughly 16,000 to the all time high 69,000 within 60 days. So when Bitcoin rips, game on. You know what I mean? So Get your piece of the pie while you still can. I mean that sincerely. Yeah. So I do think uh, so much appreciated. I think Bitcoin goes to 34,500, then to 13,000. Do you agree with me? I disagree. I don't ever see Bitcoin going sub 20,000 ever again. Can I be wrong? Yeah, absolutely. But I don't think it's probable. Now, 13,000 is extremely low. So you're ultimately saying you don't believe the bottom is in yet. Maybe though, who knows? What if there's another catastrophic black swan event? that no one expects, like an alien invasion. Will it pump the price or will it drop the price? Nobody knows. And should I say fake alien invasion? Just got to get my facts correct. Maybe we'll talk about more of that on uh, Rumble Uncensored. Gary is a worm. I agree with you. Finally, some justice for Tupac, says Yo-Yo. Well, they claim to have found his murderer, but who really knows? They claimed it was that other guy from the Crips, uh, you know, so they keep changing their story. It is a mystery. Some believe that Tupac is still alive uh, in Cuba and they faked his death, Machiavelli style. What are your thoughts? You know what I mean? Poetic justice, pun intended. Uh, petrol and gas is around $1.83 USD a liter here in the UK. Good to note. Okay, JV, check out the latest Swan Bitcoin tone was on. Okay, uh, and you'll understand what he said. Thank you, Coin Father. Appreciate that. Just imagine if Trump put one third of his investment portfolio into BTC. Wouldn't that be something? To the moon. 100K Fiesta. Let's go. What if, I mean, <laughs> obviously Elon Musk is considered the richest man in the world next to Jeff Bezos. I don't know who has the number one poll position right now. But nonetheless, imagine one of these billionaires that are worth hundreds of billions of dollars puts their entire fortune into Bitcoin. You know, Ricardo Salinas, the third richest man in Mexico, he just announced, I shared it yesterday in the show, 60% of his portfolio is in Bitcoin. 60% of the billionaires portfolio into Bitcoin. I think more and more billionaires will be putting more and more of their portfolio 
Twilio and to Beast TC. That, my friend, is a given. You know what I mean? Uh, Bitcoin fees will be cheaper on the XRP Ledger Network. That's a bonus. Uh, green light for the futures ETS because it provides them the opportunity to cook the spot market through futures. Does seem to be this way. Have her bring her Miss Bitcoin dress. You gotta. That's the only way. For sure. <laughs> Hopefully Trump becomes president, says Chris. So you guys, who are you going to be voting for president? It's right around the corner. It's also the election year in 2024. This could be another bullish catalyst as well. I mean, if they elect Biden again, or, you know, let's say Biden steals the election. And when I say steal, I mean, figuratively steal, literally, um, he's probably going to die in office. So how is he even able to run in his age when he can't even stand up? He can't even walk without falling down. This guy makes no sense to me. It's not about the price. It's about the control facts. Christopher, Tim's crypto, protect your neck. Yeah. Shout out to the woo. <laughs> A few thousand black swans to make 10,000 happen. I mean, anything's happened, right? What if there was a global blackout and no one had access? But things can go one or two ways. When there was you know, uh, catastrophes earlier this year with the banking crisis, especially in the U.S. sector, you know what I mean? Bitcoin showed its strength and started flexing its power, and Bitcoin started ripping. Some people anticipated, oh, the banks are collapsing. Bitcoin's going to go down, too. Oh, no. You must not understand Bitcoin, fam. Put in your 10,000 hours of research. Just saying, $7 a gallon in Los Angeles, damn it. Damn, T.I., that's serious. Uh, what's your take on it? What's your predict Bitcoin after the ETF? After the ETF, we're going parabolic. We're going to hit 100,000. Uh, my personal prediction is a multiple six-figure Bitcoin price for the cycle peak. I think we hit the cycle peak in 2025. So my guess, above 200,000. How high? I don't know. Hope, hopefully, the higher the better. 500,000, 600,000. But conservatively, I can see 200,000 realistically happening. So I love Max Kaiser's 220,000 price prediction. I have a weird feeling he's going to be right. What are your thoughts? Let me know. Yeah. Haha to the bench warmer. Damn facts. Word. Appreciate it. Jesse Oro, what it do? The U.S. fiat empire is about to collapse. You already know. Awesome news each and every day. Thank you, fam. Apple shows, bro. What's your take on it? What you predict Bitcoin price? Yeah. So after the ETF, multiple six figures. Facts. 2028 having bull run is when I see the hyper Bitcoinization, says Coin Father. I think you're going to be right. And, and we're going to see that $1 million plus Bitcoin price that Kathy's been predicting. You know what I mean? Chris, oh, damn, there's not enough for half the mille to have one for half of them. I'm surprised they all haven't bought Bitcoin yet because most people don't get it. It's a good thing. You have the advantage over them. You have the opportunity to front run all the other millionaires in the world. You have the opportunity to front run BlackRock, Fidelity, and all these largest asset managers in the world. You know what I mean? Let's go. Yeah, justice for Tupac, yo. <laughs> uh, big question. When Bitcoin hits the top, where is the top? Bitcoin has no top, fam, because fiat has no bottom. Facts. Uh, do you think there will be one more crash at the end of the year due to the wash trading? Uh, possibly. Possibly. Jimmy Carter is 99 today. Good Lord, for real? It's like, <laughs> what's your prediction for tomorrow? I'm going to guess above 27,000. <laughs> BlackRock's initial Bitcoin purchase is set for 150 billion in Bitcoin. Probably take two to eight weeks to purchase it. Wow, is that confirmed, Coin Father? That's major. Let's go. The tipping point. We are here. 140,000, says Sir Captain Sticks. Well, anyways, fam, uh, we're going to wrap up the YouTube session and we're going to continue the uncensored after party on Rumble. I strongly encourage everyone here, if you're watching on YouTube specifically, come join us on Rumble. The link is pinned in the live chat or you can simply find us by going to Rumble and typing in crypto news alerts. Just note the official channel has over 700 followers. There's a lot of imposters, unfortunately, and they typically have zero followers, so it's easy to tell. So just follow the account with the most followers, and that's the correct account. Or you can simply go to, uh, what is it? Rumble.CryptoNewsAlerts.net. That's the direct link. Again, Rumble.CryptoNewsAlerts.net, or simply just click the link in the pin live chat to get you directly to the episode. And we're going to continue there uncensored, because unfortunately, I can't speak my mind freely on YouTube, because it's highly censored, but I can do so on Rumble. So let's do it. I appreciate you guys. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, Monday, October 2nd, the same day the ETF futures go live here on YouTube. Deuces. Appreciate the support. And don't forget to smash that like. It helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. Peace, YouTube. Come over to Rumble. All right, Rumblers, what it do? Let's